did a removal last Friday of a Modesto ash, which happens to be one of the stronger ash species in my area. Now there's lots and lots of different ash trees and some are stronger, some are weaker. And it's all about the grain pattern. And I saved these two short pieces. Now this one's about five feet long, that one's about four feet long, because I wanted to use it for handle wood. I make a lot of my own handles for my axes and tools. And it's partly because, well, A, I like a wooden handle. B, I have a really hard time finding a store-bought handle that really knows how to follow the grain. You know, if you go back in ancient times, you know, 100 years or more, I don't know how ancient that is, but farmers used to make their own axe handles. They'd buy the head and they'd make their own handle. And the handle often had a shape that was consistent with their own design. But the farmers and the ranchers and the, the woodcutters, they understood the type of wood to use. But most importantly, they understood that if you cut through a branch and you ended up going cross grain, that, that handle was going to fracture on you when you used it. So I spend a lot of time looking for good handles when I buy them. Now here's a, here's a mall. And I looked down at there weren't any defects in this one. This one's uh, it's not a bad handle, but you know, I honestly don't know what kind of wood it is. I'm hoping it's hickory. I like ash because ash has got a bit of flex to it. Here's a handle that I made out of ash. And there's a little defect on the end here, which I'm gonna fill, so that's where my hand goes. And this is a real long ax. I made this one because I like to do a lot of root pruning and I wanted a big, hold at the end there just so it didn't slip out of my hand. I'll walk along the sidewalks and I'll just cut and cut and cut. So this tool right here, I, sh I can actually make a lot of money with this tool. But when you're dealing with the wood, if you saw through it, then you've more like more than likely you're going to um, cut through the grain and create weaknesses. So in days of old, they would always split out their boards. And when you split it out, it would follow the grain. Now if the wood twisted or grew kind of funny like this one right here, you wouldn't get a dead straight piece of wood, but all the grain would be consistent all the way through. Um, choosing an ax handle is difficult. So on this particular one, you see how the grain goes this way? If I use this piece for an ax handle, it would be stronger than a lot of them, but because the rings are growing this way, instead of this way, it's not going to be quite as strong. Here's one that I cut and uh, or I uh, used the fro and it is going with the grain in this direction. So I like doing this. It's kind of fun and it kind of follows the old school way of the proper way of dealing with a handle. And there's a lot of steps to putting the handle on there, fitting it to the ax head making it so the ax head will stay on. And all of these little tricks you learn through trial and error and lots of mistakes. There's also some unusual shapes, like some of these froze, not froze, but um, adzes here. You can see that the handle has got a real irregular shape and a square head at the end, a rectangular head that's got to fit through here and it tapers. So you fit this handle all the way through and it locks in place. The same with this one right here. If you look at the other side, this is a handle that I made to fit this one. Kind of chipped it out a little bit at the end, but it's easy to remove. You can take it and just bang it once and it comes apart and you put it back together and it can't come all the way out. So that's kind of an odd shape that's really hard to find. And the grain pattern on this, it doesn't have any uh, knots, it doesn't have any defects. And I tried to keep it real straight grain all the way through. So what we got here is a whole bunch of handle blanks.